Good evening. A uh, bit of a disclaimer before we start tonight's program, as we do uh, on all the venture forwards and VF talks going forward. And a reminder that the National MS Society is a collective of passionate individuals who want to do something about MS now to move together towards a world free of multiple sclerosis. MS stops people from moving, but the National MS Society exists to make sure that MS doesn't. They're a very important organization. They do a lot of things for folks that are suffering from multiple sclerosis, but also their family and their friends. Very important organization and a very important charity to donate money to um, in that uh, their walks start in May and the, uh, the charity drives that for that are starting now. In fact, we're going to have a guest next week that talks um, to um, her daughter's um, dealings of multiple sclerosis, what it has impacted to the family and everything, but also exactly what is entailed by what the National MS Society does for her and her family. So to contact the National MS Society, please call 1-800-344-4867. Again, 1-800-344-4867. Or go to their webpage at nationalmssociety.org. Again, nationalmssociety.org. It's time to talk. Well, we made it to another Friday. Time to talk about anything and everything that affects this Venture Forward community. This is the Venture Forward VF Talks. Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, wherever you may be, and welcome 
This is VF Talks. I am John Venturini, or as they say, JV. Uh, and this cantankerous character back there is a Triceratops who thinks he's a T Rex who is named Rex. It's just, I'm still trying to figure out how long I can take that joke and, and just drive it deeper and deeper into. Yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, how's your week? Hope you guys are doing well. Um, it's been a week. It's you know every every week has felt like a month, but uh, it's all uh, it's all something. And and during the opening, uh, I I and, and he's sitting in the green room, and, and I'm going to thank him when he comes on. But but Matt, Matt, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. Um, and he also puts up a comment. He says, "All uh, hello." And I'm uh, glad to see you, of course. Um, howdy. Hope you're doing well this afternoon. To you too. Happy Friday indeed. And uh, hello to Mr. Uh, Mr. Trading over there. Let me see if this is going to work over here. I'm going to... There we go. And then I'm, I'm going to try something new. I'm, I'm doing a lot of different things here, right? So let me, let me do this and see what happens here. Okay, I got that. Yeah, of course, I'm getting sophisticated, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, hang on one second. There we go. Mr. Haas, how are you? And then, of course, you, you know, that, uh, and of course, I got that going on. Oh, oh really? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, John? I'm not doing bad at all. And then I got this empty guest two window here and whatnot so i should probably just well hide I'll, that I'll right now and blab enough for me and the phantom guest how about that works that? there we go you know, you're, you're gonna be in both places right now that's fine <laughs> um oh idea well hey it, 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 live producing right hang on one sec oh, oh, oh this is gonna be brilliant hold on okay i will entertain the fans while you're gone you want to be on camera here we go there we go that's fine there you go oh. What's this? What's this? There, there you go. Now, now, now we've basically answered one of the ongoing questions about why why is Rex never on camera? And and there there he is, right there. He's he's on camera. So now let me just fix this because again, you know, how much concern should I have that Rex will upstage me? Potential there is. <laughs> Oh, well, John, which uh, which, um, which um, credit should I good. put underneath you, Wizard of uh, Wizard of Haas? Yeah, whatever, whatever. This is week number two on the low low carb diet. I'm I'm on. How's it going? Well, um, I, f I feel good. I don't think I'm losing any weight, <laughs> but uh. you know, I I've I feel better. And um, I'm trying out some new foods. I'm enjoying it. Fresh, delicious food. I, I like that. I like not feeling hungry, <laughs> you know, because I can eat until I'm full. Um, I don't need any supplements with it. I, I talked to my doctor. I had my physical. He gave me some tips and some pointers. And we're going to get another blood test done in six months to see if some of my nasty numbers drop a little bit. So which um, nasty numbers are you trying? So is it your your HDLs, LDLs? What are we talking? Well, the, the, my cholesterol is is high, and I I want to try and get that that down before you know a permanent um, you know solution like a uh, a daily or weekly pill. I I don't want it, if I can avoid it. I want to try not to get on any maintenance drugs where you have to take them. Mm. Um, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to it. I will, but I want to try and not do that. And this diet, we'll see if it helps. Now, he says it's it's mostly a hereditary thing, but some factors can control it. And, of course, medicine can control it. So, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm trying it. You're yeah. Like, oh, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be difficult. I'm like, well, you know what? I've done a lot of hard and difficult things, and if 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 I don't make it, I don't make it. But I'm I'm not gonna not try. So I've I've been going two weeks, and I'm I'm psyched. I I bought um, a special pizza dough mm. that's compatible with. So that's gonna arrive in the mail in a couple days, and I don't know. I'm 
feeling good. Feeling uh, you good. know, you sound great. And, you know, the thing is, you're not going to see the necessary numbers on the scale right out of the gate, especially when you're doing something that's more intrinsic to the, the quality of the food you're eating. But you sound fantastic. And you're, you're going to really get a better understanding of what those numbers turn into later on, you know, six weeks out, eight weeks out, four months out, six months out. Um, just keeping on top of it, but also staying in touch with your doctors. That's that's the most important thing. Yeah, so I'm um, I'm psyched about that. But it's been a tough week. I, I've been looking forward to this all week. I'm like, you know, I can't. I, I was I was gonna do my normal running errands. I'm like, I'm not gonna be late for the venture forward. I I can go out shopping tomorrow. So. Thank you, thank you for for delaying the errands, but also thank you for for uh, buying me a coffee. And I say oh, I'm buying Rex, buying yeah. Rex a coffee, but you know you're, you're really buying me a coffee. Thank you. Spend it however you want. And, uh, uh, well, you know maybe maybe I'll I'll finally get uh, Rex some uh, therapy and, and start dealing with the <laughs> the process to make him realize that he really is a triceratops. Even I, though I trust your judgment, good sir. <laughs> well, I do what I can, right? It's uh, progress, not perfection. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I bought a whole a whole bunch of uh, very small minor things to improve the studio. Hmm. Like I call it like a basket full of goodies. I got a a new ball head for 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 a camera, and I got some zip ties to clean up some of this um, the, the spaghetti mess of wires. Going to clean that up, and a um, few other little bits. Of, you know, little, it's cool. It's cool. I'm like, Oh, what's coming in the mail today. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like every expensive. day's become Christmas and you got <laughs> random things coming and it's, it's like, well, uh, well this, yeah. this is a recent, Oh, you can't see it, but my, um, my sign over here, I got one of those little, uh, fake, um, roadside signs. I'm, I'm, I'm really liking. What does the road sign? What does the roadside sign say? Well, well, I'm I'm open to suggestions. Right now, it says a partial phrase, which is my new um, slug line, or what, what did you call it? The slogan for my mm. channel. It says "Make vids people watch." Make vids people watch. That's great. And That's my, a great slug line or tagline or slogan. Well, my, or... my formal my formal slogan is uh, "Make searchable videos people." actually watch mm. and i know the word actually you can remove it and the sentence is going to mean the same thing but i, I like that little extra punch you know it's so all it's, about the punch right you always yeah i think so you want to you want to get something that that basically captures people's attention and and yeah it's all all marketing it's marketing 101 well you know me i love the analytics i love tearing everything apart i love learning how these platforms work but at the end of the day, if you make videos people watch, everything else will fall in the line. Like mm. all your numbers will rise and your channel will grow and people because it's YouTube is focused around people's behavior. And if what do they want people to do? Watch videos and not go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> and stay on YouTube. So yeah. Make make searchable videos people watch. That's the And when they're not paying for premium, then they're paying ad dollars too. And that, that's basically the name of the game, always. That they think everything else will take care of itself if they can get people on the platform and keep them on the platform. Mm. And my my goal of having people stop making mediocre videos and make excellent videos is going to just it, rising tide floats all boats. It's everyone's going to become better off if the garbage would <laughs> be reduced on YouTube and the good stuff. Because hey. You know, prosumer cameras, you know, gear you can buy at Best Buy, gear you can buy cheaply off of Amazon. Mm. You can have a worldwide audience in the world we live in with some of these platforms. It's not easy, but it's you don't need anyone's permission, and you can do it. And that's what drives me, baby. Well, I mean, that's that's what's possible, right? It's it's the art of the possible. That's what we try to move to is what what can we do with the technology we're giving? And what we're finding more and more is that the, the smartphones that we have have incredible cameras that all we need is a smartphone to start a live stream. That's that's the 
the, the, the one piece that's become really evident. Okay. That's what this is. This is a smartphone holder. I'm like, I'm going to buy another webcam for like a single purpose shot. I'm like, I, I don't want another webcam. My phone is going to have a better camera lens, as you just said. And that's why I bought this little holder here and this awesome little ball head. Type oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Cheap. You know, this was, you know, 30 about, you know, I'm not, I'm not dropping <laughs> no. Benjamins. On that. No, it's, you know, the thing is, uh, one of the things we, we were saying in Lita when we did Lita in August is it's not about the equipment you have. It's about how you can craft the story. It's about how you know how to prep show flow and, and do that sort of thing. But also, Basically, have fun with the have fun with the project. Have fun with live streaming, and and just becoming comfortable with your audience, being comfortable with what you're trying to portray. Whether whether we're doing self help, whether we're doing cooking, whether we're doing, you know, other technology, whatever it is, right? It, it's about the message. It's also how comfortable you feel in conveying said message. Without a doubt, without a doubt. Speaking of that, I'm thinking of redoing my 22 tips to talk to the camera. Mm. Now that I got new gear, not that the old video is bad. It's just, I don't, I, I could improve the image. <laughs> you know, the sound was on point and I think the pacing was on point, but I, I think I can do it a little bit better. So I might, I might reshoot that, that topic because it's very helpful. And I actually have a 23. Third tip now. I picked up one. Tip number 23. Yeah. yeah. Right, you you, you want to share 23? Because I'll share 23 in. with you. Okay. Because everyone should do this. All right. Exclusive. You publish a video, you should always do the closed captioning. Mm. Now, in, in platforms like YouTube, that'll give you the closed captionings. It's best guessed. It's, it's best guess. And its best guess is actually very, very good. It's the best in the industry. But you should always take it and follow along and, and clean it up. You know, punctuation, capitalization, fix a word or two. But here's why. This is like, what does that have to do with talking to the camera? That's after you've talked to the camera, Matt. Are you losing your mind? No. The, the art of correcting and updating the closed caption will force you to watch yourself speak mm. and you'll pick up patterns that you don't like you'll know what you don't like all the filler words all the gaps all the ums all the ahs it after you do that i swear to god if you if you do this 10 times in a row so you make 10 six minute videos let's say and you edit your closed captions for each one of those i guarantee your 11th video is going to be so much better your on-camera delivery is going to be so much better than what you start out with it's because it's the 11 video promise you you just you just confronted with all of your speech and delivery that you don't like because you'll know what you don't like mm -hmm. it's you're, you're word by word you're going through the sentence while you're speaking it and you're reading the word i swear everyone should do that and plus i am all about accessibility online um i when i was at the w3c that was mm. a huge part of everything we did getting the the alt text and the long descriptions and the closed captioning and the transcripts baking that all into the technology it, it was we were all over it and um I, it helps and yeah, it helps I, youtube know what's on went in your video it, it's great i love it so I, I think it's the one thing we all have in common who who either does the work with live streaming pros or does the work with uh impartial geek you know and whoever right I, I think we gravitate to those that are teaching this but we have such a love for this we have such a fascination of the visual art but also the storytelling art which basically drags us in and, and makes us more and more ingrained with it and, and loving every second of it. You know, it's, it's just amazing how these sort of these thoughts come to mind. And we could rewind the clock as, as far back as July, right? When I was saying, well, what's going on? Oh, live streaming pros. Oh, Lita. Lita. 
Lita. And then it just started processing. It's like, okay, if there's any time to start telling the story, now is the time. And now I've been doing this how long? I've been I've been doing Venture Forward since October, mid-October. And now we're in, you know, first, second week of March. Love it. Love doing this. This, is, this has been so cathartic for me. But I got to say, I am very inspired by you, Matt, in the sense that you talk about many different things on many different channels and your your love for the things you talk about and and your natural curiosity is incredible. I would almost say it's second to none. You are incredibly talented, Matt. I, I appreciate that. I I tend to grab onto things and just go all in. Mm. <laughs> I don't pick a lot of things, but the things I pick, I go all all in. it's just it's just my nature i've i i sort of had an epiphany mm. and i'm like you know what like i don't want to get to the end like when i say the end i'm like you know <laughs> end. i don't want to get there and then say to myself oh well i i, I played a lot of video games or I watched a I, I binge watched a lot of series on TV. I mean, not that I don't enjoy video games, not that I don't enjoy some some good series, but you know, I'm like, I, I want more. <laughs> like, I don't want to bring it, bring you know? it. <laughs> so, um, I, it's it's so fun because a few people have said this to me, and it seems like something so minor, mm. but for me, it, it was. They were like, it's like Matt. It's like, are you a life coach? Can, I, 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 I want you. I want, I want to, you to rub off on me, because you know the, you know, but you know before you know the year that shall not be named happened. We will not name I, it. We don't want to lose any chance of being demonetized. Not that they're going to be monetizing me anytime soon. But go ahead. I, mean, I, I, I was pushing it like every opportunity that came up for something. I, I just said yeah. I said yes to everything. Like mm. that's that's my. That's my, 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 my mantra. Yes to everything. So I jumped out of an airplane. I, I did a dance contest in front of my whole freaking town. Like I'm just <laughs> learning to play the piano. They're like, <laughs> they're like, well, look at your timeline, man. I was like, what, what happened? I was like, well, you know, I, I woke up one day and I'm like, you know, let's change things. Yeah. Not that it, not, not, hey, not that I was complaining, but I'm just like, you know, there's, there's gotta be, there's gotta be more. So, I, that's, oh yeah, there's plenty more. And, and the wonderful thing about us doing this and we're being on the forefront of technology is it's always changing. And the, the technology is not terribly expensive to begin with anyway. So it allows us to jump in on these things really quickly. Gillingman had a question for you in the sense that, um, how is the jumping out of the airplane for you the first time? <laughs> I almost didn't do it. Like, I, 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 I was going to say, I'll stay in the plane and you can land the damn thing. But I, I did it, and it was fantastic. I, I did have a minor health issue with the pressure difference, and I had some inner ear stuff mm. go, go a little south. Was it like uh, um, some of the Vertigo family, or I thought my eardrums ruptured. Mm. It didn't, but I was considering get checking myself into the urgent care because I, I it was that bad. I I didn't drive home like my son drove my car home because I went I did it with my son. Mm. But I loved it. I loved it. It it was it was so much fun. People say like, oh, if I felt like I was flying, I was like. Uh, no, mm -hmm. you feel like you're dropping like a rock the whole time until the chute gets pulled. Which leads to Gilly's next question in the sense that, did you grab the sides of the plane? Some people do that and freak out. <laughs> that was the most craziest thing out of the whole experience because you're you're on a perfectly good plane like the, the plane is 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 not flawed in any way and they open the door and then with because i have to do tandem the first time mm. so i'm in front of the guy you know the experts behind me so i got to go out the door first 
Now we're all clipped together, but I got to put my foot on the, on the little step that's outside the plane. And I got to grab the, the, the crossbar of the wing right. and I got to pull both of us out. And then, and then, and he says, harness your hands. And that means I have to take my hands off, off of it. Now he's holding on to these behind me, but, but they won't do it unless I remove my hands from it. Like, the, and they say, go like this, just so it doesn't get caught up in any equipment. And then he pushes us both off. And frankly, I, I just saw sky. I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh, this isn't this isn't bad. I'm like, I, I, what was really happening was, you know, I was I was going upside down like this. This is my head, mm -hmm. and then the head goes, and then you eventually look down, and then and then the the, the earth went whoop in front of my eyes, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I, I see. see. Yeah. I, yeah. And, and we, you just you scream toward the earth, and we were free falling for about forty five to fifty seconds before before the 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 the, 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 the chute starts to pull, and that's halfway down. That's ten thousand feet. So you drop five thousand feet almost in less a mile. Than a minute, yeah, and then and then the chute pulls, and then you you float down for another five six eight eight minutes so yeah it's it's crazy so the guy that was helping you jump the the, the flight instructor the jump uh -huh. instructor yeah. was he a character actor that was also doing uh dinner theater productions of full metal jacket because it sounded like the arley army impression yeah. it was spot what's on what's your name <laughs> <laughs> where are you from the only are you ready to jump jump <laughs> <laughs> and the Another thing is his weight plus my weight was like five pounds under the maximum allowed. Mm. We were two big guys. So I'm like, oh, Christ. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, it, it, it was insane. And my, my son was, was in the plane with me. That's all the plane could fit is four people and a pilot. And so we're all crammed in there. And he says, Dad, I want to go first. I'm like. No, he says, why? He says, because if there's a horrible accident, I don't want to watch you go from like I want I want I want to hit the ground and 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 and, and not see you hit the ground. <laughs> but right. um, I definitely don't want that to happen. Uh Mr. Gutierrez uh, Mr. Gutierrez had a question. Okay. What do you think uh what do you think someone with a fear of heights should do uh to prepare for skydiving? Outside of drinking coffee. That's a good question. As someone who doesn't have a fear of heights, I, I don't know how to answer that. Um, you know, it, you just have to come to the realization. Just think think through to, to your last day on the planet and, and put yourself in the mind of you during that time and ask yourself <laughs> – did I wish I really did? It oh my god! Because <laughs> you know, I, I I eventually said to myself, "Well, you know, I, I know it's safe. I know it's safe. I know those backpacks will fire, whether me and or my instructor is conscious as conscious because they have altimeters, and if they don't recognize the deploy, they'll deploy on its own. So there's safeguard after safeguard after safeguard. And he made sure the four points of contact were connected because I was connected to him at four, at four strap, at mm. four clips. And it, so, but you just say to yourself, like, all right, if it's, if it's going to be the end, it's the end. It would be, it'll be one hell of a way to go out. <laughs> That's what I told myself. You basically like, said to yourself, you know what? Happen. It was a good run. It was a really yeah. good run. And, um, <laughs> And make a good headline. <laughs> That's sure. what I told myself. <laughs> I don't know. Gilly says, drive 100 miles per hour in your car and then remove the windshield and then try reciting the national anthem. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was crazy. Marilyn says, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Marilyn. Hope you're doing well. But that, that, so I will not be doing it again, but I'm not, I'm not going to avoid it because of nerves or anything like that. I just, I don't want the ear issue to resurface. And... 
I'm not. Uh, I, I, I realize I got my test scheduled. I'm going oh. in one of those sound booths with mm. like an actual doctor for an hour and a half, and they're gonna. Do you hear this? Do you you know repeat these these words? And I'm so, I'm so an see. actual doctor, not not uh not an actor. <laughs> Just shocking. Like, it's 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 not the kiosk at the mall, is what I'm saying. It's not like a, <laughs> someone who has a doctorate is going to test my hearing, and I'm gonna see where I'm at. And um, just just to note, not that they can fix that. See, that's the one thing. Everything else that's wrong with you, they can remediate it. But if you lose, if you if you're losing your hearing, they cannot reverse it. Mm. Science can't help you. It will not get better. They never get better. Mm -hmm. There's only one path, and that's the path of deterioration. Right. That's uh, not a great path at all. They're like, oh, hearing aids will fix it. Hearing aids just blast louder sound into your ear. That's that's their purpose. They don't fix anything. Mm -mm. If your eyes are bad, you can get LASIK. You know, if if there's other way, you know, they can fix they can fix other parts of of your senses. They can't fix hearing. It has a lot to do with the bone structure within the ears, but it's also tied to your brain, and it's very intricate to figure out exactly what's going on, especially when we start talking vertigo. So I understand why it's such a complex science, but you're right. You think that modern medicine has come a long way to try to fix this sort of thing, and yet... Nothing modern science knows can improve hearing loss it's right. a one-way ticket baby mm. and it sucks but i mean hey you know life isn't fair that's just the way it is right so now you sound like a bruce hornsby song and you know i, I wish i'd have known this because like i had a vacation on a cruise in the caribbean and i booked scuba diving I'm like that would be fun well little did i know this pressure issue with myself caused me to get violently sick day two of my seven day vacation. So my whole vacation was basically, I don't want to say ruined, but the enjoyment was, was throttled down. Minimalized to a certain and degree. If, if I didn't go scuba diving, I'd have been fine. Cause it didn't, it would, you know, scuba diving is all about pressure and I'm having an issue with that. Yeah. Same thing with airplanes. Some airplanes are really loud in the cabin and some are not as loud. So I would bring earplugs. And if I had earplugs in in an airplane, I would get sick the day because it would it would it would something about the pressure. Like I was stopping because it's all a pressurized cabin and stuff like that. So if I don't I figured out if I don't use earplugs in in an airplane, then I'm fine. You know, it's just I, I don't want to get overly geeky for a second, but how much – so were you flying enough to know the difference between what a, a Boeing 737 does to you versus that of a, a McKellen Dash 8 or other airplanes? Do you, do you, can you go plane to plane to plane? Well, McKellen Dash 8 is no. a small little prop jet. Let's be frank about that for a second. It, 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 nev it never got to the point where I could discern the, the type of aircraft. It's just the, the concept. If I if I'm on a plane, and I I put the earplugs in, I hose myself up. Now uh, what what I re resorted to doing was using the the over ear muffs, mm. so those aren't blocking the ear canal, and that was fine. Like I I so I I bring hearing protection onto planes. It looks like you know people might mistake it for, you know, um, ear you know uh, an MP3 player. Yeah. But it's not it's not electric. It's just it's just hearing protection. Cause uh, it helps. So you have really, no no good music coming out of that. You just have a lot of cancellation going on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it deadens deadens the sound. But you know, hey, if uh I'm fortunate, you know, uh, overall I'm I'm healthy and if if I have to deal with a pressure issue, well then, hey, I'll... And you're doing the right things to to basically combat the cholesterol issue. You're doing incredible work there, man. And this is, these are the yeah, things hey, we have to do, right? My doctor is so... I had the best conversation with him because he told me things I didn't know. And it was a wealth of information uh, about diet, 
about exercise and about the the plan that we're on now he helped mm -hmm. he helped me modify the plan um he didn't recommend i go on a low carb diet i said this is what i want to try and I, um i i need i need your opinion and guidance and oh man he is just he was so good and in addition to him being an excellent doctor because mm. he is a doctor he's not a you know physician's assistant oh, he's, not, <laughs> you know, he's not uh he also this thing, i want to hang out with my doctor I, I think it's not appropriate but i would love to know him personally because he his side gig he's employed by mma Mm. the mixed martial arts and he he has clients that are fighters and he's at the side of the ring and he calls the fight if if his guy gets beat up too much he says it's my job to keep you alive and he's told stories about what he has to do in the ring he says if some if 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 his client gets knocked out he jumps over top of them and puts both their arms under his knees he says because when they come out of it it's as if no time has passed. Mm. And if they see you in front of their face, they're going to punch you. They're going to think you're their opponent. So he's like, you got it. You, you got it. You got it. And then he, he tells me the little uh, uh, pre-fight spiel he gives his clients. He says, like, um, if, if you wake up and you see my face, then you know you're okay. <laughs> and, and don't freak out. <laughs> Very comforting words. Anyway, he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. We have someone who thinks uh, it's probably a doctorate of something who says um, self-contained underwear breathing apparatus, uh, Dr. Gilly. Underwater breathing mm -hmm. apparatus. Under <laughs> Underwater breathing <laughs> apparatus. That's mistake number one, if you're scoring at home, and I know you are. That's one. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Gilly, there you go. Self Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Dr. Kelly. So I I won't be I won't be scuba diving nor will I be skydiving again. But hey, there's a lot more out of life than those two activities. And Absolutely, and I feel like, you know, we're talking about this, and I, I feel like I, I should address something that came out of Lita, and that I still have a laundry list of things I have to do. That I was gonna go um, I was gonna go uh, cliff diving, I was gonna go uh, skydiving. And I was going to go jumping out of a plane. And I know that, um, you know, I, I, I know I'm still on the hook for these things. And, and whether I get there by August, I don't know. Well, can, can I make a suggestion? <laughs> yeah. How about. Now, I, I don't I don't want to change your, your bucket list, but consider consider doing one of those skydiving events that are indoors and they have an engine underneath you yeah. and it just blows like that I can do because there won't be any pressure problems because I'm, I'm at the same part of the atmosphere. I'm not 10,000 feet up and then <laughs> dropping back down. Would you do that? It was a four step process, Matt, not to, not to go back down memory lane for a second. The first step was to actually do I fly, right? Then the second step was to jump, uh, I think off of a off, this, the, not skydive, but the the jump off bungee of a jump? cliff or, or bungee jump. Second was bungee okay. jump. The bungee third was jump. cliff diving. The fourth was jumping out of a plane. Is the I fly what I said? Yes. Like indoor. Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If 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 you want to double up, I uh, I'm willing to do it with you if, you, if you'll have me. I think uh, it won't be fodder for Lita in April, but it definitely could be fodder for Lita in August. I'm at your disposal, good sir. Oh, that's incredible. Thank you, man. Uh, Paul, how you doing? Good to see you this evening, this afternoon. Hope, hope you're doing well. Uh, Paul is working and can't call in, but can watch at least. You know, I hear that from Kelly all the time, so I'm not sure if there's something up with that, but <laughs> Paul, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm glad you're, uh, you're on tonight for sure, or this afternoon rather. And then uh, maybe no more scuba diving or skydiving, but do you guys go book diving <laughs> What are your favorite genres? Favorite genre of book, Matt? I love science fiction that isn't hokey. <laughs> I like science fiction that's written in a way where you could actually conceive of it happening. 
and that could be mystical, you know, fantastical things, mm. but it has to be based in, you know, as if it could happen, you know? So in other words, like space wizards with laser swords, meh, <laughs> you know? I like, you know, Dune. Dune is fantastic. Space wizards with swords, but they have a hard time hearing. <laughs> Yeah. You know, really taking it back and having a hit home. You know, it's like, wow, <laughs> that, 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 I could tell that story. I like that. And I like a lot of the um, marketing type of uh, business strategy type, type thing. I, got, I bought a lot of Gary Vaynerchuk stuff. And mm. That's, that's what I like. A lot of self help recovery these days. So, you know, Body Keeps a Score, I've been reading that. I've been reading that since on and off. Uh, I've read it all the way through three times since 19 as, as I went down this process. I think uh, Addiction No uh, Addiction No More, <laughs> Codependency No More, that's another book. Codependency No More is another book that I actually want to do a couple of episodes of The Venture Forward on in, uh, maybe in May. Start talking about that side of the story. And then there are a couple other books that I've been reading. Uh, but it, read... it's very non nonfiction at all. Sorry, Matt, go ahead. No, I have a question for you. Um, have you read or do you know about Freakonomics? Yes, that's a great book. That is, a, I'm like, I had no idea economics could be so fascinating. That is a brilliant, and you, you know what I liked about that book is they dug into the data and the data cause them to understand causality mm. not just happenstance you know because if you can there could be things could be correlated but not the cause right they find the cause and that was just in, insane like for example can i tell one of the things in freakonomics yeah. was japanese sumo wrestling okay now, this is a sport that goes back thousands of years, steeped in tradition, okay? Very formal. Ve it's part of the culture and the lives. But the way the matches are set up, I don't fully understand this, but I understand the gist of it, and which, which is the point of the book, is if you have so many wins, then a loss is meaningless, because you just you just have sort of have to pass the bracket or, or something like that. So that's the way the whole sport is constructed. And looking at the data, they have they found out that masters who would have won the match based on the previous matches in the bout and, and their past performance would purposely throw one of their matches mm -hmm. because it doesn't hurt them. And they would be taking bribes. And so they they got it to the point where they took all of this data and they could tell with 100% precision who was cheating. And the mere fact that the word cheating was even associated with sumo wrestling, with this steeped in culture, it was it it rocked the whole sumo industry and the and Japan was furious and mm -hmm. disappointed and it was all there in the data and it's it's just i was like they could tell that just from the da large data sets data analytics of large sets of data you can actually tease out causation not just correlation but the causation, causation. Get it. and that was each story in that book is equally fast i don't know i loved it I think you nailed it when you said that is the education system for sure. The, the talk about the causation and not necessarily a mere prediction of what's going on, but when, when the sort of pattern recognition of what's going to happen. I liken that sort of phenomenon with, with uh, sumo wrestling as the same sort of phenomenon as what um, players who, who play Go professionally, that rating mm. system the sort of penalty there is for, for basically going to the upper levels of being a professional go player. It's the same thing in sumo. It's that sort of mindset of, of 
watching the sort of success or a win rate of a higher level player and then penalizing accordingly one way or another. And then almost with Go players, you could kind of see when that sort of thing is going to tail off. I, I've known a Go player for a very long time. I've known her for about, wow, I'm dating myself a bit here, about 25 years. I would love to have her do the show at some point to talk about the sort of freakonomic aspects of Go as opposed to the freakonomic aspects of Sumo and then other sciences, other phenomenons that that sort of thing is prevalent in because obviously they're not the only two things that are going on there. Go is a fascinating thing. And it's it was the last thing that they could program computers to beat humans. Mm. because the rules are so simple and prof professional go players who have been doing it for decades they they ask them and they analyze them they well i just had a feeling i had a feeling that was the right move like that's and also military high ranking military they should learn go because it helps you be a better battle frontline battle type strategy yeah, yeah it's, for sure uh, it's a master class in strategy and and having discussions with her i i think i've severely disappointed her when i said you know i'm not really into go and it, it's her life she's written websites about it she's she's played professionally she's done world cup opens she's i mean that's her life but i mean i would love to have her on a show at some point to talk about that uh, after so many A's, a B doesn't do much damage. Yeah, that, that's kind of the mindset, isn't it? Not from Jonathan. You're all the way over there on Facebook. I, I can barely see you on Facebook over there, people. I'm I'm monitoring the YouTube chat. Here, here's one more who's uh, on Facebook, and, and that would be my mom. Hello to you. Love you. Glad you're on Facebook. Glad you're watching tonight. Hi, John's mom. <laughs> I have something to tell you about John. Go ahead. I, I I think you probably know it, but like he's a really cool guy. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Thank she you very much. She might have a hunch that that's true. I, I suspect. <laughs> I am um, Matt. I, I I think the same of you, if not more. You're an incredible gentleman, and uh, I appreciate all the stuff you've done for the show. But just our friendship, you're incredible, Matt. Uh, Gillingman takes it one level further and says, "John's a badass. How about?" disarming old World War II mines in Upper East Africa that still take out people all the time. Hardcore Peace Corps volunteer job <laughs> slash humanitarian. Yeah. I watched that movie about mines. It was just called Mines. It was a, a movie, but it was based on a real thing. And uh, yeah, the, um, the, the the one serviceman, he, he put his foot down and it went clink. And I'm like, oh, my God, he halfway, you know, because and then you step up and then it, it goes off and he was stranded there and he was calling to the base and they're like, we're, we're going to come get you. He sets his watch to get mm -hmm. along. He starts hallucinating. There's coyotes in the desert like he's, he's he's hanging on for dear life. And then the time comes and goes and they're like, oh, it's going to be tomorrow. He has to wait 20. Oh, my God, they barely got him out of there. And then they dug it up and it was a soda can. That was under, that was like three inches under the sand and it went clink, but it sounded just like it, it was uh, uh, an armor, or what do they call it? Uh, um, a mine. It sounded like, mm -hmm. like it, it was like mine. a mine. And uh, man, what an or what an ordeal. <laughs> like you can't move. You, you can't sit down. Like you got to stay standing because you can't change the pressure. No. Yeah, it's horrible. Mines. And the thing about that is it's just, they're indiscriminate. And they and they persist after the war efforts over that they, they should be um, they should not exist. Humanity should not use mines as a. It's just not yeah, they're problematic. That was one of the major causes when she was alive that Princess Diana was undertaking with that as far as humanitarian effort, as far as trying to end the use of landmines across the world's armies and whatnot. And then, of course, she tragically passed away but yeah that's it's a very serious thing and and the fact that it has that sort of um it's the word i'm looking for it sort of unpredictability in what's supposed to be a natural science on how it's supposed to be triggered it's 
It's a perfect case example, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Any uh any big plans for the weekend, Matt? Yes, I will be finally after 2 months recording my song on the piano. Ooh. What song's that? Well, I I made the I guess mistake if you look at it of trying a song categorized as pre-advanced on my app. Mm. It's Blondie's Call Me. I think. I oh, here we before. go. I, ha- I, I I went to shoot it last weekend. I I just wasn't happy. I wasn't happy with it. I'm like, no, I can't publish this. It, it's got to be better. And now I think I finally got it down. And um, I'm, I'll be glad to get past that because I want to get on to some other cool songs. And yeah, but pre-advance was, was a big stretch for me. Well, I mean... <sighs> It has notes in between the notes because I'm mm-hmm. used to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, this song has one, two, three, and then a beat and then four. So it's one, two, three, three, four. Right. <laughs> like, well, why is this note here? It shouldn't be here. So your fingers have to do st- – it it's very hard. It's very hard. So I didn't realize that like, Call Me was, uh, was, in a four, was in a three, four instead of a four, four, the piano-wise. I think they call it thirds because right. um, it's 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 yeah where 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 notes fall in in between the notes because instead of their eighth notes stuck in where they shouldn't be, and there's a lot of a lot of uh, note presses that go into the next measure, so the measure doesn't start with the note. The measure starts with the ringing of the previous. So it's very very and it's fast. It's fast, fast, fast. I'm actually tired when I'm done playing it. Cause I'm going, anyway, that's I'm why, that's why that. the two months have been very strenuous and you're waiting for the two months to end or the, this, it's, it, it, they got the payoff this weekend. I, 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 I don't think I'm going to, I'm going to knock it down from songs that aren't pre-advanced. Okay. And I'm going to maybe learn a couple of those and then, then I'll start getting on a faster publishing regimen. And then I think I'm going to pump, pump it back up to, to pre advance because this is tough. So that I'm looking forward to that. What else am I doing? Oh, I'm going to clean up all of my um, cabling. Mm. Uh, Cause I, I got, so you got all the, you got, got all the twist ties for that. You got all the cable management over. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Do you know how many multi packs of these things I bought? It's Amazon must think 11. again. I, uh, many. I bought many of these things, and they're only like six bucks or something like that. So I'm gonna clean up all of my stuff. Some of, some of the cables are on top of the desk, and I want to fish them underneath and to come up real nice, so they're not spewed out all over the place. This cable back here, I don't know, you can't see it, but there's I I threaded all of television stuff behind the drywall so it's really nice mm. except that one freaking audio cable which i added like last minute i just stuck it in there and it's hanging down so i'm gonna put that away what is that audio cable attached to the tv the audio oh, so it's the audio for the tv and down right and then it goes into the rodecaster pro mm-hmm. and then when i play i play pandora on the tv it comes out my studio speakers yeah. got it and actually, that sign, that subscribe sign, you can just see that little piece of red right there. Um, it actually covers the speaker on the TV because the speakers are down firing on, on each side. And so I'm like, well, if I'm not pumping audio out of the TV, it's not going to matter. So, so I'm going to do that. What else am I going to do this weekend? I don't know. I'm open to suggestions. Minor league baseball is starting middle of May. Okay. We're starting a month late because uh, spring practice started late. Yeah, and they also did that wacky thing with the realignment of all of the minor league baseball leagues in the sense that there is no more international division or anything. They've just mm-hmm. – I don't understand that at all. Now, our team, the Harrisburg Senators mm. – made the cut they're going to exist but they they were going around to the ballparks and they're like if this ballpark is a piece of crap we're cutting you because 
Major League Baseball doesn't want a bad baseball experience. And thankfully, in 2010, our ballpark was redone mm -hmm. a, a decade ago, well, a decade and a year ago. And so it, it was just brought up state of the art and stuff like that. So we have a nice facility outside of Harrisburg, in the, on the river in Harrisburg. It looks, you can see the capital from this. Anyway, uh, so we made the cut. It's good that you made the cut. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what the percentage of the, 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 the sort of AAA teams, AA teams that did not make the cut, and what is the sort of uh, recourse of that? Did they become independent league play? Uh, inter uh, sorry, independent league teams. I don't even know what happens to those uh, clubs. I think it's up to each of the owners to figure out what they want to do with it. Mm -hmm. They they could go to independent ball. Independent ball is is starting to uh, become a thing now, and it's funny because uh, Lancaster and York both have independent stadiums, and it's the exact same stadium the only thing is york they use brick and in lancaster they use cinder block <laughs> but inch for inch that sounds is, about right it's like they just bought the plans and just dropped it on a city block <laughs> boom that's your stadium <laughs> for the independent ball not you know from yeah minor league ball for mlb they you know each one's different I mean, they don't even, so I was trying to remember that article. They don't even call it International League anymore. It's what, AAA East or AAA South or Triple. I don't even know how. Well, single A, Double A, and Triple A. Yeah. And then each each one of those has divisions. Right. And they could be like West, East, or, you know, something like that. Yeah. And I think there were uh, six teams and, and, and six teams in, in the division. One, six of the teams are are west and six of the teams are east but it's in the blah 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 division and then that exists for single double and triple and frankly mlb is a little high on themselves because the whole point the whole point of the single double and triple a was to find talent mm -hmm. and bring them up into the major leagues and now major league baseball is like yeah, we don't need that anymore. We've we've got computer models. We've got statistics. We can find our own talent. So now they're like, we really don't need you anymore. <laughs> then that's why they were swinging the hammer. You know when when you know you were mentioning Freakonomics before. You know when Moneyball actually heads into the New York City office and becomes part of Major League Baseball. As far as how they deal with ma minor league baseball. It loses a lot of its luster, and I gotta say, I'm gonna be, I'll, I'll go on my, um, on my soapbox for a second. I think Rob Manfred has done a horrendous job being the commissioner of Major League Baseball. I, I don't, I don't think there has been a time where I've, and, and don't get me wrong, I didn't like uh, his predecessor that that was supposed to be interim commissioner and ends up having the job for 20 years. I don't like the fact that um, that a lot of these commissioners ended up being. I think the last great commissioner that baseball had was Peter Uberoff. And that was back in the 80s. So, I mean, I don't think baseball has had any decent talent by way of commissioner for a very long time. And, and Rob Manfred is an absolute joke. I don't know. I don't like much of the, the, the three batter rule. I, he's trying to transform the game and trying to make it something that, that a lot of the fans still don't want. And it's not a generational thing. It's not a question of... Uh, a Gen Z versus a, a you know Gen X versus a, you know post -mill or millennial. It's not like that at all. I mean, a lot of fans across generations still don't understand what Manfred's doing to baseball. They, they, they made some changes to minor league rules that came down from MLB. Now it's not MLB rules. They're testing it out in minor league, and they may or may not adopt it. But the end of the day, it just gets the game over faster is what they're doing and um like for example overtime if you if you go extra innings yeah i'm sorry it's extra innings in with runners on pace if they go into extra innings they automatically get a man on second yeah and they put that rule into major league baseball last year when that word that i'm not supposed to say became a thing and the season got truncated for that they put the runner on second base for that uh, they at least was smart enough to take that rule out when it got to the postseason. 
but I don't like that rule at all. And they, they actually took that rule from Japanese baseball, the Nippon League. The Nippon League had the, the runner on second base, um, and they only play 15 innings of ball after 15 innings in Nippon baseball and ends, ends up being a tie. I hope that never comes to pass in Major League yeah, Baseball. Americans wise. will never tolerate a tie in any sport. No. That's not the American way. We need something to be final. Just the way Americans think. The one, but, the one uh, thing I'll say is I'm okay with a tie in hockey. I, I don't like the shootout. I think the shootout's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not, not familiar with that. But, um, and then also I've, I'm learning because now that I'm the vice president of the fan club for the Double A team, mm. I'm learning a lot about management and the and the business behind it. The players are not compensated very well at all. Now that's the double A level. They're really not. Um, and they're making decisions to make it easier for the players that are worse for the fans. Like Sunday, for example. Sunday is usually the last day of the of, of a stint. Because you know, they go to a, a stadium and they play all week and then they leave on Sunday. So in other words, the team is traveling. Sunday night into the month, you know, to get to their next destination and they want to get them on the road earlier. So they keep moving the Sunday games up earlier where it's 12 noon on a, on a Sunday in July, the sun is direct. There's nowhere to hide from the heat. It's like if they would only like start it a couple hours later, like why have it that, Anyway, so they just keep doing that. And then that's encroaching on people who go to church. Now, I'm not a church-going person anymore, but still, now it, now the people that are in church can't go, and then people who don't want to withstand <laughs> direct overhead sun. <laughs> the, I'm like, it, what, to, to get the guys on the bus an hour early, I'm like, come, is it really going to make a difference an no. hour early? Anyway. I'm sure they came up with some sort of uh... – cost model some sort of uh you know cost benefit model to figure out okay well if we we leave the bus at 247 instead of 217 that's what it's like i could just envision the 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 union for the players got together with the management and had a gripe and like all right fine we'll start the games an hour earlier does that make you happy yeah it makes you happy rubber stamp approval meanwhile ticket sales go down because you're losing a whole swath of of people who who won't withstand the sun and, and can't get there because of things they do Sunday morning, every mm-hmm. Sunday morning, because that's what they do. And so I'm just like, Oh, well, I'm, I'm glad you satisfied that negotiation point, but it's really hurting the bottom line. So I, I get frustrated at things like that, but I, I do love the game and like you, the whole money ball thing. Like you, you, what, what you were getting at is mm-hmm. it's baseball is a statistic game. Very much so. so. I tend to think now people can tell me to go pound sand. People could tell me I'm wrong, but people who are intelligent (laughs) often like baseball because they can follow it and get more out of it because they're thinking through all the statistics and they're it's, it's a game of data. So I tend to think smart people like baseball (laughs) more than others. I like to think so, but you know, but uh, that could be complete bunk, but Hey, that's Eh, could be. Uh, got a comment that uh, Rex is being shy that his eyes are covered. I I, I was absolutely doing. He, he was wow. he was a bit tired, but I was also trying to plug live streaming pros for a second. And there there you go. Uh, the, I, we were I, talking I, about Lita think, before. There you go. I think John's fallen behind on his royalties, so he can only show part of his face because he's he ran out of of money. And, and uh, he's saying that's that's you want to talk about utter bunk. <sighs> Marilyn is uh, glad you're here, Rex. You cantankerous tri- uh, T-Rex. Can't call you that. Eh, you're a Triceratops. Whatever. You know, I will I will continue to joke through Lita in April, and I'll probably continue to joke through Lita in August, and, and it's going to it's gonna be a joke from now on. It's, it's just this. You know, you, you drive it. You drive that train till it falls off the tracks. Pretty much. That's the protocol. Or until until Rex has um, you know problems with his ears, then, <laughs> then maybe. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, as far as me, I I got a long drive ahead this weekend. I'm gonna 
maybe taking a park or something. I don't know exactly where yet, but uh, got some plans and okay. might take uh, might take Monday off. Don't know yet, but uh, we'll uh, we'll see when go. we get there. Oh my! Yeah, I, I you know if it was this time last year, I was heading down to Tampa to go see some spring training baseball when the thing that should not be named happened. And then I canceled the trip because the thing that should not be named was causing havoc. So I would love to go down to Tampa, but I don't think I'm in a safe place to do that yet. So I'm going to head to the Western end of the Commonwealth and do some things out there for a couple of days. Well, when, when you pass Harrisburg, honk your horn twice. As loud as I can. Roll down the window and say, hey, Matt, and I'll, I'll listen for you. <laughs> uh, I'll, make sure, uh, I'll make sure you're listening, and then you let me know when you hear it. Okay. Good deal. Good deal. I, um, I think on that, I am going to put a giant bow on this, if that's okay with you. Uh, yeah. Matt, as okay. always, you are phenomenal. You are the Wizard of Haas. You have 109 million sites out there. Uh, what, what are your three favorite that you want to plug real quickly? Well, I have wizardofhaas.com. If you go to it, then you, it'll point you to all of my YouTube channels. You could probably start there. Or you can go to allthingsyoutube.com. Mm-hmm. That's that's a good place to go as well. That has access to my course and my new product where I will analyze your YouTube channel and give you a written report with a remediation plan to do improvements, actual improvements that will yield results. So that's up, up and running now. So, yeah. Wizardofhaas.com or allthingsyoutube.com. Well, Matt, I, you um, very, very uh, incredibly talented individual. But moreover than that, you, um, you're a great guy. And I'm, I'm thankful for your friendship. And uh, you are just, uh, you're awesome. You definitely right are. Right back fantastic. at you. I'm, I'm just having fun. And if, if, uh, if you like what I do, all the better. But I'm, I'm doing it and I'm sharing it. And no one's stopping me, so I'm moving forward. Well, you know, I hope, uh, you know, I hope you have a great weekend, and I'm sure we'll catch up sometime this weekend. But um, you take care of yourself, you. and and thank Travel you safe. once again. Wizardofhaas.com, Matt Haas, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And go back to Maine over here. Hello again. A uh, couple of uh, administrative items first. Uh, Marilyn says thanks, JV and Matt. I enjoyed it. Yeah, we enjoyed uh, we enjoyed the conversation as always. Matt is a fantastic gentleman for sure. Uh, Gilly says venture forward, number one podcast on YouTube in my opinion. Gilly, you are you are incredible, and thank you for for uh, for that. Muchly appreciated. Um, Matt definitely thanks you for that. Matt says bye. Uh, quick little plug. Um, like, comment, subscribe uh, to the Venture Forward. Uh, I, I, I love doing this. Um, it has been a cathartic process for me to to do this uh, this project, and I will continue to do this project uh, as we go forward. Uh, definitely some interesting topics to talk about in the coming weeks. Uh, one of those topics has to do with the MS Walk. Uh, so I have uh, a dear friend of mine who will be joining me on Tuesday night to talk about uh, her daughter, and her fight with multiple sclerosis, but moreover, the incredible work that the, uh, that the MS Society does um, as far as helping friends and families of those that have, uh, of, of people of MS uh, get through this by way of funding disease-modifying treatments, but also trying to help out uh, major pharmaceuticals and hospitals try to find right therapeutics and, and, and potential drugs that could be a cure for MS, multiple sclerosis, and demyelination. So... Uh, definitely looking forward to that conversation on Tuesday. Thursday will be a continuation of that as I will talk about more about how MS has affected me. I know it's uh, basically a carryover from last week, but I wanted to talk more about the mental and psychiatric effects of multiple sclerosis and how it's affected me. Uh, and then we will do another VF Talks one week from tonight at 5.15 Eastern, 2.15 Pacific. The Tuesday, Thursday shows, by the way, as always, 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, and I think it's also a place for me to quickly talk about the MS Society in the sense that the MS Society is a collective of passionate individuals 
who want to do something about MS now, that want to do something about multiple sclerosis now to move together towards a world free of multiple sclerosis. MS stops people from moving, but the National MS Society exists to make sure that MS doesn't. To contact the National MS Society, please contact, or please call rather, 1-800-344-4867. Again, 1-800-344-4867, or go to their website at nationalmssociety.org. It's uh, something I will mention on every single episode going forward, as much as I talk about uh, the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration on the main program on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So um, it's definitely a very important charity, definitely a very important foundation, and um, definitely something to read up about. So there's the website. There's the phone number again, 1-800-344-4867, or you can go to nationalmssociety.org. Whatever you end up doing this weekend, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, the weather is supposed to become more spring-like in this area, in the in Pennsylvania, in the Northeast. Hope you have a great weekend as well. And I'll say the same thing I say at the end of every single Venture Forward NVF Talks. Stay safe, stay sane, stay strong, stay sober. You're worth it. I'll see you Tuesday night at 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific for a very heartfelt conversation about multiple multiple sclerosis and what it does to family. Have a great night. Heading into Vegas in my blue stripe car. She's riding shotgun and she looks like a star. Yeah, she's got the style that makes you think she's made out of gold. She says she likes it better. Yeah. I'm gonna make it worth your while I'm gonna make it worth your time I'm gonna make it worth your while When she's with me We're like superstars When those roll down radio on I think we could go far We don't need money A ticket to my Sun in my eyes It can get better than when she makes that smile Yeah, she's got that style that makes you think she's made out of gold She's turning up the volume on the radio Let's go.